Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I am Johnny B. But together we are... Modelling for Advantage! Hit it! So, Kaiser, once again, you seem to have bought more product. Not only more product, Jay Mizzle, but this is British more product, and that means you have to paint it. Hey, let's get these uh, open. So, what sometimes have we, got? we cut this bit, and sometimes people like to watch us fail <laughs> wrapping apart. It may have preempted a little bit. Woo! So, British Airborne, sir. That's Starter what it Army, sir. Beep, 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 beep. That's Starter what it Army. says. Starter Army. Blinding. So we talked a while ago about the fact that you know we're going to bit trying to get a bit more well informed about the forces that we use. So in different systems, you're going to keep playing British, kind of get inside the head yes. of that. I'm going to try and mostly play Germans and so forth, trying to kind of get into that zeitgeist a little bit. Indeed, and me, the British, Indeed. obviously. Yeah. As that is mainly my force. I say mainly, I mean solely. My <laughs> force yeah. is a Britishers. Um, must confess, I already have maybe a few sprues of British Airborne. you got airborne. a few sprues of British Airborne, yeah. But a couple. I am interested. This is a thousand point army in a 50 pound box. True fact. That is not a bad gig, that mate. Mm, no, it seems to be most of the Star Armies are a thousand points for those that have asked yeah. about others in the past. But most of them are 90 quid. 90 pounds, yes. So what, what's this, this is problem? infantry heavy and it's veteran heavy, I think, mm. making it much more affordable. Nice. Interesting. And I like mostly dude based armies. Yes, I know. Dude based armies, mate. There we go. <laughs> anyway, enough of the patter. Can I have a look? Yeah. I'll tell you what, while you, while you start doing that, shall I tell them what it recommends this thousand point list is? Ooh. Can stuff out. Yes, please. So, we thousand point is a second lieutenant and one rifleman as veteran. An artillery forward observer, which we know is free, of course, if you're playing British from the book. Uh, three paratroop sections, so 10, 10, and an eight man. There's a lot of SMGs in this list. So there's mm. LMGs, SMGs, and those teams. A Vickers medium machine gun, a light mortar team, a medium mortar team with spotter, a Piat team, a sniper team, a flamethrower team, and a six pound of quick firing anti tank gun. So there we go. A lot of stuff in here, mate. That's a fair bit. And there's more than that, besides... Mainly Ooh. plastic, mind you, so that's good. Mm. Pretty much. Go. Do, do with the sorting, do the sorting, that's the main sprue. Pretty much exclusively plastic. Couple of bags of metal and a load of plastic. Uh, yeah, packed by various different people. Where do you want to start, Jay Bizzle? You're, you're the Britisher. Uh, well, the meat of it, you kind of want to leave to last, right? Because, you know... We're all going to leave it to last, so they're going to watch the whole <clears> video just so we... Yeah, this yeah, we've got to long this out, But so. we need to sort the metal bits out. Shall we do that? Do you want to do that? Let's have a Let's look have at Let's have a cut here, we'll sort the metal bits out. Yeah. Mate, so, I've got bag A, B, C and D, but there's uh, actually only two bags. Yeah, very Interesting. confusing. Bag A and B. Should we start with bag A then, John? Let's do the A, B, mate. Um, a, B. So... Three-inch mortar and a Vickers medium machine gun. Boom. Boom! Medium machine guns, bolt action. You're not a fan, are you, John? Um, I thought they were cheese. You thought they were cheese? And then I was schooled that they were not. <laughs> oh, John made a list that maximised the number of machine guns when True he played facts. Germans yeah, once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believing it, it to be a cheese list. I thought it may have been at the time. But... <laughs> yeah, and it was pants, obviously. Uh, the medium machine gun. It just needs something extra. Now, I hear in Conflict 47 or the career or something, they've got like a sustained fire. Somebody did comment. Fire. Yeah, suppression. Um, yeah. Adding additional minuses. Some yeah. worth thinking about looking into. Look, I think the Vickers water cool machine gun is a really really iconic weapon system. It's pretty it's cool. British. Um, it's, it's the jacket, isn't it? It's, and it's, it's, the, the, it's the sitting down. So you're like, I'm, you know, I'm you getting comfy really before I start fighting. He is in a very comfortable position and he looks to have, I'm not sure the other one does, but this one's got like a proper water condenser. It's got underneath. a condenser, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you get the standard bits. Now, because A and B come in a single bag, <laughs> yes. you have to sort of work out as we which just which? did, which, yeah. which crew goes with which. Some of the crew's obvious. So obviously there's a dude sat down with a gun, there's a dude with a big belt at Ammo. Yeah. But then there's two crew men that, that look like they could go for either the mortar uh, 
or the uh, they just select the random kneeling guy, either the mortar or the machine gun. Um, and we I mean look to it, it's it's the guy with the stent who's pointing is part of the Vickers team. And the reason to say that is on closer inspection, the second kneeling guy on his opposite side from the mortar team has actually carrying yeah, some yeah. mortar rounds. Wasn't until we turned it round. We didn't and the other one's like Ooh. so they're obviously that and the third one's dropping it. So the three inch Stokes mortars uh the mainstay of any bolt action, right? Uh, yeah, I yeah. don't think I've ever fought a, a force without a without a mortar. mortar. You or get a mortar. lot of you get a lot of value out of your 60 po 50, 60 points. True it's fact. fifty sixty with a spotter. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And without a spotter, it's a waste it's, of points. It's pretty pointless. That's that's metal A and B. We we'll show you the painted figures. Jay Bizzle's got painted. Not paras. No, they're not. They're not paras. But so we can show you some of his painted of. versions of the equipment, but we'll we'll get the warlord official photos for you to have awesome. a look at, so, so you can see some assembled ones. And obviously, these are intended to go at least sixty mil bases. I like the diorama value of of, of having crude weapons on on bases, but I know it's, it's, it comes down to the gamey versus looks, yeah. doesn't it? Because during template the game, weapons are a thing in this game. Template weapons are a thing in this game. Yeah, and and taking casualties off, like, but I find that the game ends up, the boards end up full of markers after the first round anyway. True. So I don't really care about the fact there's an extra marker in play because yeah. an extra dice. Or it's whatever. not that big a deal no, for me. No. Um, to be honest, uh, I like them to be together. I just wish that template weapons weren't a thing because you're generally disadvantaging yourself by making a, di a, a, a diorama base. I don't think they used to be in first ed. I think they bought templates in. For second. For second. Yeah, yeah. And actually, we always measure templates to the base and I keep meaning to check. I think it's probably to the model. Yeah, quite possibly. So we're probably clipping far more models than we yeah. would because we're measuring to bases and the model's less than half the width of the base. That's so, worth a check, sir. That's, that I think that's what we're going to check before the end of this video. Uh, right, that was A and B then. A and B. A and B. The mortar, excellent. Look, you know, if nothing else, you just view the the um, medium machine gun. Either A, play scenario-driven games like we try to. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about how many points it was. Just recognise it's not a very powerful weapon system in the system. Or, or two... Just see that as the free thing you got in the box, yeah, right? For sure. It's, not, it's, it's a, a nice model. model. It's a nice model. Fun model. It's good. Uh, shall we move on to bag C and D, which is still one bag? Bag C and D, which is still one bag. Yeah, so in C and D, we've got three things. Yeah, this was quite <laughs> interesting, yeah. It's really thrown you. So again, uh, three things we've got in here is the light mortar, the flamethrower, the six-pounder, and the tank gun. What do you reckon, John? Where do you want to start? Uh, light mortar. Start with a light mortar. So the light mortar... This is a nice kit. The light mo two inch mortars or 50 mil mortars in other people's army, or the Japanese have what they call a knee mortar. I don't think they actually brace it against their knee, but I might be wrong. But I think it's that kind of length and that yeah. kind of, you know, like it's, it's I might, quite. If ditty. you know more, let us know. Um, but it's cute, isn't it? Mate, look mortar. at the loader, dude. He Look. looks like he's pulled something. <laughs> oh, his face. It's like, oh! <laughs> this guy's dropping it in the tube. But it's a cute little. A cute yeah. little mini. I'm not sure how you could pose these two miniatures in such a way as this guy's actually anywhere near putting that in the tube. It'd be more like, well, hey! You could put him in front, but then his head would take the blast of the... So the downside is the, is the light mortar is a, is a, is a two-man team, and in terms of the bases, they haven't given you the 40mm base. Have you got a single lip? I've got a random... A single... That's for, the, that's for that prone guy. So they're expecting you to base these individually. He's with a single prone guy with a two inch mo uh, you know. Oh, uh, yes. And there's, yeah. I don't think there's a way you no, can manipulate I don't think you're those. No, put them both on. You can kind of, you know. It looks a bit odd. But though. I like the little 40 mil rounds for the two man teams. Yeah, true fact. Yep. But the other problem with a two inch mortar, the two inch mortar has only got like a 24 inch range. Yeah. Um, you, even in lists where you can take them, the problem is that they go in the same slot in the roster builder as the, as yeah. the medium mod. If it was a completely independent <laughs> thing, yeah, perfect. But it's like, no, no, no. This goes, it's this or probably the best value weapon uh, system in the game. Yeah. And Let's which is why you just don't see them. Which is a shame because the two inch mortar or the 50 mil mortar in a lot of armies is a really low level bit of tactical 
more commonplace and likely to be yeah, on the front yeah. line, right? Yeah, they're incredibly common. I believe they're integrated within the platoons. Yeah. They're at a really low level. Whereas even single mortars, medium mortars, single ones, not they're, really a they're thing. They're in batteries as well, aren't they're they? They're in batteries. Just they're, again, line. they're at fairly low level. But again, I think they're normally in batteries rather mm -hmm. than just the one with us today. Right. Yeah. But the two-inch mortar is the one that's at that really sort of section level, level action. That's two-inch mortar, anyway. Awesome. All of this metal, obviously, as you've seen. Okay. But as we look at missions, I think we want to bring the two-inch mortar into the game. Oh yeah, I think it could be a bit of fun. And as you say, because it's on a more local level, tactically yeah. in a section, yeah. it makes more sense. So yeah. from a narrative perspective, I think that's good. Yeah, and with paras that, you know... Yeah, they're not going to be lugging that round. They've just got a tube in their backpack. You know, exactly, jobs exactly. Are good. Mm, let's do the six pounder. Let's do the six pounder. So I'm going to have a look at this. It's a little bit different to the army six pounder. Oh yeah. Um, it doesn't have that kind of extra plate you've got at the front on yours. Interestingly, obviously it's got his, it's got his three metal crewmen there. You get a picture of the warlord one. I don't know whether it's because the airborne one is a little bit different to reduce the weight of it. Maybe which is a thing. that makes sense. Or it might be that airborne British airborne. This is essentially a 1944 kit, whereas the other one might be usable a bit more, oh, a bit earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah, that might, might also be, be. This might be a later version of it. I'm not sure. So the six pounder anti tank gun. Um, I mean, they're all right. You've used it a few times. I think the thing that you have to think about if you're playing, if you're just playing straight up bolt action, reinforced platoon, you're probably not going to take a paratrooper veteran <laughs> anti-tank gun uh, anyway. No, I can't imagine that would be... Uh, and it. what I like about this set, what we've seen so far, is it's a little bit more narrative rather than a bit less gamey. There's stuff in here that paratroopers would have rather than stuff that's necessarily great in the game. Yes. But it wasn't expensive. You haven't got loads of money poured into that. You know, it's not like you've not got a terrible 20 quid vehicle in here yeah. or something. So uh, the six pounder is about the most powerful weapon system you're going to see the paratroopers have. I think they did have them, but I don't know whether they dropped with them and they came in the gliders. They must be in parts, man. Or whether that's... <laughs> Just roll it out of the back. Yeah, because the six pounder still... You know, it's not a two pounder. No, no, it's um, not. Whether, it's there, whether it is, whether it has come in a glider or whether that's the kind of equipment that they got later. Yeah. Certainly, I don't think they were... There might have been a couple of six pounders at Arnhem, actually. Really? There might have been. But now I'm kind of thinking about it. How did they get them there? Because all the Jeeps were broken. Mm. Yeah, nearly everything was broken I when think, they dropped the in. Radio, everything <laughs> everything, yeah, everything was dead. Yeah, the plan. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do think there might have been a six pounder there, you know. Whether it was whether it was made and actually active. Yeah. Maybe they dropped it. Anyway, Who getting knows? distracted. Last thing in here. Okay. <laughs> Love-hate relationship with this last uh, metal piece here. Right. You get a flamethrower. You get a two-man flamethrower team. You've got some random oh. spoon with a rifle who's just... Just you know, running along. Tooling along. Yeah. 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 Close with his body. And, and, and the guy with the donut flamethrower. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, so fuel what, pack. What? I mean, what's wrong with them putting a flamethrower in here, John? What's Nothing, wrong? mate. This is this is um, game versus, you know, rules versus what what is. Um, yeah. And I, I think I've actually maybe a bit of you has rubbed off on me. That sounds wrong. <laughs> <laughs> in the sense that flamethrowers are a staple diet on the straight to table game of bolt action. Absolutely. If you haven't got one of these in a mortar, there's something very wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the re realistically, would a flamethrower be on the front line just in a in an infantry action? No, no it's a bunker buster. It's to clear a, a position. Well, well, it's a specific piece of equipment exactly for a particular right. job. So it's incredibly dangerous. Yes. To be just tootling around with. Yes. That you know these are not stored. They don't wander around with full tanks of of. of no. You know this what's is, as effectively you say, this napalm. Is, uh, we've got a position here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're so let's flame get the flamethrowers ready. You idiot, Johnny. <laughs> are gonna go and do that <laughs> yes boss so yeah, yeah it's it's solely just yeah. a, a preference i mean i'm not saying that people didn't go into action with flat. it's not like they're only in set piece moments but they they well, they're they not tooling around they with them. them they're on they're available yeah in a box over there <laughs> yeah yeah or with <laughs> Maybe, the engineers or, or yeah. whatever so the issue is in bolt in bolt action the for the points that you pay it's for it and the effectiveness that it had is totally out of proportion. In the game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, sni snipers come close to that, mortars come close to that, but flamers are so good. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, if if they work, they're 
the game changer. Oh yeah, taking that sections at a time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so that's that's that is kind cool. Of what we that's that's just our views. Yes, it's cool that absolutely. they've put one in the kit. I mean, to be honest, if you're making a, sp a starter army for an infantry heavy oh, yeah. game for their game system, uh, you know, out of the book. It needed a flamethrower. Yes, <laughs> Frank. Uh, otherwise, you're like, oh, I played this game once. The other guy had a flamer. I need yeah, to get one of them. Exactly. Uh, and a veteran flamer team, perhaps better, perhaps worse. I'm Maybe. not sure. Uh, that's all the metal, then, that is John. All the metal. You know. Yeah. Uh, noisily scraped that over there. My stuff was packed there. by a mixture of Becky and Vats. I had Judith all the way. All right. So you had the who? Judith. Now either they left out the H, <laughs> and it was Judith. I've never met Judith before. New, new, uh, fresh blood for the wall right. of things. Okay, so the meat. Let's talk about the sprue. And and you're no rookie here, John. You've got one of these sprues at home. I have had a few you, of these. You have painted <clears throat> some of these guys up. Like, I'm just looking at this and I'm seeing, do you know what I see wrong with this? What? So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve dudes with berries and six dudes with helmets. No, what you see is six dudes with helmets, yeah. six British dudes with berets, and six Polish Airborne. Ah, Polsky Komandowski. Polsky Komandowski. Oh, so okay. You get oh, the they've got moustaches, mate. They've got moustaches. They're wearing their berets slightly different. They, how they do wear very different. Yes, you're um, right. So you've got the option of three, well, two different-ish style yeah. units. And one guy there. with a head wound. Yes, I love that. <laughs> I love, I love that head, head wound. Um, this kit, you get all the rifles you need. You get plenty of SMGs uh, yes. for, your, for your elite dudes. Um, yeah. Plus your Bren, you get your pit. Now, it hasn't quite got all of the gubbins as we've seen in the most recent Canadian and British Commonwealth dude forces. A lot of the kits already moulded on to the torsos and models. Do you remember that? Yeah. Well, these have got these have got the, they've got the, the front, main ammo pouches. They've got the front pockets, but they haven't yeah. got the back stuff. You know, the spade, right. the entrenching tool, and right. The, so they're the they're still separate, yeah. and the little pack on the back. Uh, oh mate, you've got a bugle on here. Yes. <laughs> I was upset that it wasn't an umbrella. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, we've all seen that movie, right? Yes. So they've, they've got that more modern approach to the moulding, haven't they? It's like yes. the two arms and the weapons, or one arm and the There are a couple of individuals. Are there any open hands? Is there one or two on there? Um, not massively. No. There's a single rifle where... There's the an open hand attached. I can see here. Um, and you've got the two inch mortar as a tube there in one hand. So you can get, you've got all the things that you would expect to find on here, right? And there's six guys on the frame. I'm not seeing a two inch mortar. Is that not what this is? I think that's a telescope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. that may, you might be right, sir. Yeah, you might I be think right. That's a telescope. telescope. Oh, these guys have got enamel mugs on their packs. Yeah. These are yeah. proper. I really enjoyed painting those because <laughs> these are detailed with the, with enough the to the get little, the blue, the to get the little blue rim, rim on them. Yeah, um, and I think one of the things about paratroopers to distinguish, obviously, the British paras, the uniform is really quite different from the from mm. the kind of the, the tunic and trousers yes. that you're going to see the regular soldiers in. These guys are wearing big loose camo smocks um, and Denison so forth. Smocks, didn't you know? The Denison smock, indeed, sir. Um, but the other thing is about packs. Now, there's a lot of people saying like mm, soldiers don't carry their backpacks into battles in i'm not I'm quite sure, sure about that did, i'm pretty right? sure that paratroopers do though they don't have anywhere to leave them. exactly <laughs> if they're fighting they you know uh, after in. a drop i love the fact that they've got it's not just that this is a british paratrooper this is kind of an arnhem set isn't it yeah. that's why they're giving you the polish brigade yeah. options yeah. and the bugle which we all remember so distinctively from that movie and the head wound guy because they're all they're fighting for quite some it, time. Yeah, yeah, and the casualties, yeah. the walking wounded, they did not fighting pile there. Up. It's a solid little kit. So what am I saying? What am I saying that you've not got here is—is is there a Thompson? I'm seeing a lot of Stens. There's mainly Stens. Mainly. Uh, when I say stens. mainly, I mean is it only entirely stens? stens. So you only get Stens yeah. on there, no Thompsons. I don't know whether they did or didn't. You get a sniper. Um, you get an Enfield with scope. Do you? Yeah. Um, in the middle of the kit. Oh, he's carrying it. He's carrying so it. Scope, scope kind of foreign. part masked. Yeah. All right. So there's, so there's not there's not many things that you would want that you can't build because you've got your P at as well. Yeah. You, you like mortars there in metal. 
mate, and you got some, you know, grenades to just stick on the webby. Yeah, randomly. I think this is a nice kit. You've got a squad painted up. We'll show that on the spinny do for the uh, beautiful people at home to look at. Uh, we're almost finished, aren't we? Six of those, mate. Six, Six of those, bros. So that is 36 dude bros. We've got a decal sheet. You want to show them that, John? Well, I'm just uh, I mean, I'll try. I show don't them know the decal much, but this you is can cool. get in close. Um, You've got the, the wings, uh, or whatever they are. The wings? And the Pegasus dude. Uh, whatever, they're similar to the paras. Have little parachute oh, yeah, yeah, thing, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up there, up yeah, the top. Yeah, they jump, they jump wings. And the Pegasus dude thing. Yep, yeah, that's the, that's that's the their airborne. That's symbol. That's the divisional symbol. Divisional yeah. symbol. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, you get your little bit of paper in here, which tells you what everything is. Everything. If you're not sure. Um, but this isn't the best way of trying to find something. You're better off finding it on looking for it on the screen. Yeah. This is a big old list in no particular order. What this is most useful for is if you're looking at something and you don't know what it is, it'll give you a name. Yeah. It won't explain what it is, but at least you can then go away. You could Google it and find out what it is. <laughs> Last thing we've got in here, we've got a few bases. We've got 36 guys on sprue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh. eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, so about 50, 49 40, models, 50, 49 20, guys. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 of the 25. 45 of those bases, but you've several of them going to go on this larger Boom. base format. I think for 50 pounds, it really is a thousand point army. I don't think there's anything in here that is utterly a joke. That's 50 quid. This is 50 quid, this arm, because there's no vehicles in it. And because they're all veterans. Yeah, but I'm sure, I'm sure a box of 30 dude blokes is like 30 quid. Yeah. 35 quid. Yeah, but I think 30 dude blokes would be five of these sprues. Five sprues. So you're getting one like extra these. sprue and then these metal pieces. Yeah. 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 That's what I mean. I mean I'm, I'm quite, that's, that's all right value it's, though. It's decent value. I don't think it represents a massive saving of a buy no. separately, but it is a saving. And it is most of the stuff that you would want. I think it's a nice kit. Now you got these, John. Do you know the arms? Are they at all interchangeable with the old? They British? are not. I can confirm no, that. Yeah. You, I'm adding things might... because of the smock anyway. They yeah, look quite weird. and it's not only that. The way that the torsos, um, the arm joints on these sort of slant forward. If that makes any sense. Right. Uh, whereas on the original, they're quite static yeah. and, and vertical so it's very difficult to uh, to do it with a little bit of work you might be able to but i really don't think it's worth the attempt no no and the beret heads how do they compare with the commandos uh they're better because the berets are integrated on these so they look more natural oh, the whereas commandos have separate on the commandos berets. it was primarily the uh <laughs> first edition infantry yeah but the berets were separate and oh, you just slap them on, so the sometimes it looks a bit odd. <laughs> it looks a bit if, like if on you, top. If, yeah, if you don't put it on quite right. Right, okay. So much better quality for that. Nice, nice sprue, nice kit, decal sheet, bases, as we've seen. Bugle. Everything you expect. Bugle. Ta -da! Sorted. 50 quid. If you're looking to get started, you're not looking to have a lot of vehicles or whatever in your force. You want a veteran infantry army. This is pretty nice. Options to build it. As Polish Brigade as well, solid. which it, I don't I don't think it said that anywhere on there. So it's not as a nice kind of extra yeah. on there, which wasn't expected. All right, guys. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. If you like the kind of stuff that we do, rather than just waiting for the blooper reel, why don't you head on over to our website, modelingforadvantage.co.uk. We've got affiliate links to places like Whaling Games there, where when you buy your models, if you buy through our link, we get a little bit of kickback and it doesn't cost you a penny more. There you go. Let's uh, let's just have a cut there and <laughs> and have dinner because I believe we're being summoned. Boom, boom. Take my breath away. Mm -hmm.
Light mortar and, and right. flamethrower and six pounder. Holy shiz balls. 